Today we're talking about one of the X-Men, one of the most powerful telepaths in the Marvel Universe, an Omega-level telepath, a favorite to many. Today we're talking all about Psylocke. Before we begin though, let me thank you for watching JLS Comics and pressing play. If you like videos like this, don't forget to hit the like button and if you want, the subscribe button as well. I have comic book and superhero content I upload weekly. Okay, with that out of the way, let's jump into our Psylocke story. Elizabeth Betsy Braddock grew up at Braddock Manor in England along with her brother Brian who went on to become the hero Captain Britain. But it is not as simple as that. Merlin, a being from another dimension, sent Dr. James Braddock, her father, to Earth to birth a child who would become a champion. All right, let's talk about Merlin for a second. Merlin does claim to be the same Merlin of Arthurian lore. He is a being called an Omniversal Guardian that lives outside of the Omniverse in a, in a place called the Otherworld. The Omniverse is the totality of all universes that exist. The way Merlin works is that he is connected to every other version of himself in the Omniverse, and from this vantage point, he's able to manipulate events as they unfold. And it's through this that he was secretly manipulating the Braddock family. While Chris Claremont, who created the character in 1976 as Captain Britain number 8. It was actually Alan Moore who fleshed out the character much more. It was Moore in 1983's Daredevils number 3 who gave her her iconic purple hair and who and who wrote her into Strike. So let's uh, get to that part of the story. Dr. Braddock created a supercomputer called the Mastermind that eventually caused an explosion at the manor and so Mastermind killed him and his wife. Operating for Mastermind it was Dr. Sin in an attempt to kill Bestie's older brother Jamie who kickstarted her precognitive abilities during a psychic attack. From here, Brian and Betsy split. Brian became Captain Britain and Betsy joined an international side division of S.H.I.E.L.D. known as Strike, or try to fit this on a business card, the Special Technical Reserve for International Key Emergencies. As any good covert operative would have, Betsy had a public-facing identity where she was a fashion model. Government agents, knowing Captain Britain's identity and knowing they lived together at Baddock Manor, attempted to persuade Brian to work for the government. He refused and he gave up the costume, which Betsy then took on, becoming the second Captain Britain. She used an alternate dimension version of her brother's suit. Why? Well, he tried to rape her and he killed him, so the suit was available. Betsy was nearly defeated by Brian's arch nemesis Slaymaster, but using her psychic abilities called out to her uh, brother for help and he came and killed Slaymaster, realizing in the process that he has to continue to be Captain Britain, so he went back to being Captain Britain. Betsy had to recover after her defeat, so she went to Switzerland, where she was subsequently taken control of by Mojo. Betsy got cyber eyes from Mojo that were later used as cameras to broadcast to Mojo World. She didn't know this, though. Anyway, the New Mutants intervened, recovered her, and she then chose to remain in Westchester with the rest of the X-Men and the New Mutants. Her first U.S. appearance is New Mutants Annual Number 2. Once Betsy fought off Sabretooth, the X-Men with nomination from Wolverine himself inducted Betsy, using her gnome de guerre Psylocke, into their family. He must have been impressed with her uh, stand against Sabretooth. Okay, here's uh, starting with Uncanny X-Men 251 where it gets confusing, but stick with me, we'll, we'll break it all down. A crime boss of the hand named Matuso Sareba had a brain-dead lover named Quanon that he wanted to save. What happened is he had the body shop swap the minds of Psylocke and Quanon. The process gave them both the same memories and psionic powers. Crime boss Sereba turned Psylocke over to the Mandarin who took her in and gave her the name Lady Mandarin, but she was able to escape soon thereafter and an encounter with Wolverine refreshed her memory and then she resumed her life as Psylocke. But meanwhile, Quanon was still trapped in Psylocke's body, but she now called herself Revanche. Revanche discovered that the legacy virus, which is an analog to HIV, was killing her. So Psylocke's mind was now permanently in the body of the female assassin Quanon. So now we have the mind of a white British character living in the body of a Japanese woman's body. This has been a point of contention for many since it initially happened. But this is where Psylocke picked up most of her ninjutsu skills and developed the ability to manifest a psychic knife which she now wields as a psionic katana. This was the original plan and how it changed according to Chris Claremont. This is a quote. The idea was to put everything back the way we found it originally but then looking at what Jim had created visually she looks so cool. Heck fix it later. I mean, Jim, Jim will be around for three years and then we'll get a new artist and we'll fix it, end quote. But this didn't happen because Claremont got into some arguments with Bob Harris at Marvel and left the title. What was meant to be a quick Lois Lane type race change became years. Fabian and Jim Lee didn't put her back until, well, we'll get to that in a minute. In 1991, the X-Men split into gold and blue teams. Betsy joined the blue team led by Psylocke. Jim Lee wrote her as flirting with Psylocke, but it was later discovered that it was actually Quanon who was flirting with Psylocke and not Betsy. In 1994, Scott Lobdell, right of the Happy Death Day movies, wrote Psylocke and Archangel into a relationship. Then, in X-Men 328, when Sabretooth gutted Psylocke, Angel, Wolverine, Doctor Strange, and Gomer, 
the Ancient retrieved a magical liquid from the Crimson Dawn dimension which healed her and gave her new powers, but also marked her with a red tattoo over her left eye. From here, she fell away from the limelight for a while until the second volume of X-Men where she was able to use the Crimson Dawn to trap the Shadow King in his plane. It was at this time, due to Jean Grey's contribution to the mission, that Psylocke developed telekinetic powers that was Uncanny X-Men 381. In X-Men Volume 2, number 109, her relationship with Archangel was officially over as she struck up a new one with Thunderbird. In 2001, Psylocke was on a mission in Valencia with Rogue and Beast when she died. Extreme X-Men number 2, written by Claremont, saw Betsy being taken off the board for four years when he brought her back again in Uncanny X-Men 455. Betsy was later reunited with Brian during a Scarlet Witch's House of M event, where all of reality was warped. But Uncanny X-Men 470 through 473 saw Betsy again revive. Her brother James, leader of the Forsaken, wanted to use her as a weapon against First Fallen, a being that's polar opposite to the Phoenix Force, both of which were created during the Big Bang. The way James did this was he tightened up her quantum strings and rendered her virtually invincible, but this also enhanced her telekinetic powers. Um, Salak was interdimensionally teleported to the Crystal Palace at the nexus of all realities in New Excalibur number 8. This is where we meet the Exiles, who recruit Psylocke to help them protect the Omniverse. This was due to the manipulation of Roma, the daughter of Merlin. Remember I mentioned him at the beginning? Once she returned to the 616 universe, she had to rally the Exiles and Excalibur to defend other worlds from an army raised by Mad Jim Jaspers. Ultimately, the heroes won and allowed Psylocke enough time to travel through through different dimensions to track down Slaymaster and kill him again. There was a time when Madeline Pryor's sisterhood stole Betsy's original body and resurrected it. Dazzler had to intervene and blew off half of Betsy's face. The attack allowed Betsy to come back to consciousness and escape control of Madeline Pryor. 2010 Psylocke miniseries by Chris Yeo saw Betsy revisit her past and deal some vengeance upon the hand, the same criminal organization that had changed her body. After Second Coming, Wolverine selected Psylocke, Deadpool, Phantom X, and Archangel to be the new X-Force team. This is where the spark between her and Archangel was relit. During a later reformation of X-Force, one in which Cable and Psylocke were an item, Psylocke was forced to use her psionic knife on a godlike, insane Phantom X. After the events of Secret Wars, Psylocke for a time found herself back in London, but it was here that the Shadow King once again attempted to attack her mind. The X-Men, in her aid, went to the Astral Plane to find Shadow King, and also found out that Shadow King was keeping Professor X's soul trap there. Professor X, using the name X, was in the body of Phantom X, now had Proteus with him. Psylocke went in and attacked Proteus, defeating him and Psylocke, ultimately defeating him and Shadow King with the X-Men's help. In Hunt for Wolverine, Mystery and Madripoor, Kitty Pride chose Psylocke along with other female mutants to help hunt for a newly resurrected Wolverine. The psychic vampire Sapphire Styx absorbed Psylocke into her, where she discovered a massive amount of victims along with a fragment of Wolverine's soul. Psylocke was able to destroy Sapphire Styx from within and, using soul energy, came out with her original body once again. So after decades trapped in Quanon's body, she finally had her own body back. And that, my friends, is the origin and history of Psylocke. Did I miss something you feel is important, have questions, or an idea for a future history video, let me know in the comments down below or tweet me at ComicsJLS and I'll add it to the list. As always, thanks for watching, subscribing, and I will see you in the next video.